Walking in here, Summit has only lost by split decision over 10 rounds with August Semorang for the Indonesian minimum weight title in April of 08. Since then, he's got 15 straight wins, including the WBO Asia Pacific Light Flyweight Championship. The book on this kid, fast, power in both hands, good jab, good body shots, and very well conditioned. Tommy Sarn from Indonesia. Big fight in Indonesia next week. Uh, the Indonesian boxer is doing a great job, led by Chris John, the longest reigning world champion, is fighting next week. And of course, Jordan uh, also uh, Jordan, one of the great fighters over there as well, very popular. This is Milan Melindo, 28 no, 11 knockouts from Mendao City in the Philippines. He's coming off a September win, a 12 round majority decision over Jean Barrow Perez for the WBO International Flyweight Championship that took place in the Philippines. This is his first fight outside the Philippines. He turned professional in 05 in the Philippines with a four-round unanimous decision over Mel Rumo. He won 28 straight fights to begin his career. All right, Lupe Contreras is standing by. Let's get this one underway. Here's Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with the action once again, proudly brought to you by Bob Aram's Top Rank Incorporated this bout. Presented in association with Ala Boxing and ABS CBN Sports, along with La Cerveza Tecate con Carácter, and our host, the Venetian Macau Resort Hotel. This bout, scheduled for 10 rounds in the flyweight division. The judges are Robert Hoyle, Levi Martinez, and Raul Caiz Jr. The referee, Jose H. Rivera. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He wears black with red and blue trim. When he stepped on the scale, he weighed in at an official 108.8 .8 pounds or 49.3 kilograms. In 19 professional bouts, he maintains a record consisting of 18 victories against one lone defeat, with nine of those victories coming by way of knockout. Representing Surabaya, Indonesia, Tommy Seda. The fighter in the red corner, wearing black with the Filipino colors of white, gold, blue, and red. He weighed in at an official 112.6 pounds or 51 kilograms. And he enters the ring undefeated as a professional with 28 victories. 11 of those victories coming by way of Macau. Representing Puerto Cagayan de Oro, the Philippines. Milan, el meteorico Melindo. So we're set to go. Jose H. Jose H. Rivera from San Juan, Puerto Rico, makes his way in, calls the fellas in. Ten point must scoring system again. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Rivera trying to get the attention of Melindo. He has the WBA Intercontinental Light Flyweight title. He won in 08 with the 12 round decision over Carlos Melo. I want a clean fight, okay? But are you, sir? 2010, okay. Melindo on. won the WBC Go. Youth Intercontinental Flyweight title, and last year he won the vacant WBO Intercontinental Flyweight title, and has defended that title three times in 2012. This guy, Melindo, is a boxing technician, and Tommy Seren so is a boxer as well, so this may be a real nice boxing match as, since we've had three knockouts to start our show off. Both guys are wearing dark colored trunks, the black trunks. And the man with the high socks is Melindo. And that multicolor soda is uh, Saren. Nice digging body shot right away by Melindo. 
two orthodox fighters. The guy wearing the red shoes is Saren to the left of your screen. And down goes Saren in the first round as Rivera begins to count. He's back up. That was a beautiful left hook taken to the right side of the head. It crushed him right below the ear. Saren's legs aren't totally there, so Melindo comes in. This is not what we expected. He's ready to go again with the jab. Watch Melindo digging body shot. He's hurt him now. Those are two digging body shots. Very, very aggressive is Melindo. Not known for his power, but he's taking advantage of it early here as he surprised Tommy Saren. Of course, the competition that they see in the Philippines that Melindo has to work with in the gyms is different from what you would get in Indonesia. So the records, uh, while both of them are terrific, Melindo <laughs> looks really outstanding. Of course, anybody does when they knock somebody down in the opening seconds before the seats get warmed up. He gets uh, Saren in trouble here. Saren trying to settle down right now, but he's still very flat-footed and a little bit loose in the knees. But Melindo has plenty of time if he can catch him. Two good body shots again below those elbows. Cern's in tremendous physical condition. 208 three quarter pounds, and uh, Melindo's a little bit heavier at uh, 212 and a half. It's a big difference for little guys. Two and a half pounds. Well, Cern surprised here in the early going. He's making a decent show of himself right now. He's a boxer, too, as is the book on Melindo, but Melindo showed surprising power with his first left hook that just crushed. Just below the ear on the right side of the head of Tommy Saren. Saren made the mistake of entering what I call that kill zone. That's in the zone where you can be hit unless you're throwing. And he still has a little bit of a tendency to waltz in, but not as much now. Because he realized and has felt the power of Melindo. Melindo facing you. He's wild with the right hand and then catches him with a nice body shot again. There's the jab. Working off the jab, now doing a nice job as he stands right in front of him. No head movement from uh, Saren, so that's a problem for him. Although he bends at the waist, he took another shot there. Digging body shot again. Hard body shots by uh, Malindo. Malindo doing a nice job about boxing him here in the closing seconds now of round number one. Jab, 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 comes back uh, Saren. That's the right idea. You don't want to be in that uh, hit zone without throwing, and that's a mistake he made early and paid dearly as he got knocked down. It's a 10-8 round for Melindo. We'll have the replay for you to show you exactly what happened to Saren, and you'll see that it's a nice solid left hook which crashes to the side of the head. Good atmosphere in here. Bands playing. It's Kind of like being in a football match in Europe. And this is great for China. Boxing is brand new. Remember, this is the Fist of Gold show. And here's the knockdown for you. Watch the left hand. Bang! Right there. Snaps the head. Give you one more look at a great job by a camera guys here. Who, by the way, are new to covering boxing. And they're doing a great job. And we got one more look for you. And our videotape replay men are the best in the business. Beautiful shot. Drops him. All that shots. And I directed tonight to Marty Cohen. And what a great job he's done. Just getting a show out of here is fantastic. And it's really exciting to be in China. My, uh, not my first time in China doing fights, but this is much more exciting than any other trip I've had to China because of this magnificent Venetian hotel and the job that Top Rank in association with Venetian has done here. And the fight so far have been exciting with three knockouts so far. And this one with a knockout down in the first round. The supply weight uh, battle between Milan Melindo of the Philippines against uh, Tommy Saren of Surabaya in Indonesia. The Indonesian fighter has the sort of multicolored trunks with the red shoes. And the Filipino fighter has the high black socks and the black trunks. You see a little bit of yellow in the bottom part of the trunks. That's Tommy Saren. Saren comes forward, he's boxing better now than he started in that first round. He was surprised with that power shot that we showed you three uh, different versions of what happened. Look at this. Kid knows how to box, isn't he? So long as he keeps throwing punches when he's on the inside, he's okay. But you don't waltz in, as I mentioned. 
the mistake he made in the first round and you know he survived because his legs were really shot and that's to his conditioning because and no question you saw the replay yourself you can evaluate just how hard he hit him it was a clean clean shot with a left hook right hand that time right on the chin and Surin's hurt this time a little bit more. Very loose in the knees and heavy in the heels now. Referee Jose Rivera gives him the eight count. So he's down in the first round and down again in the second round. Now there's a lot of time, a whole minute to go. Let's see if Bailindo can do what he couldn't do in the first round and try to finish him off here. Surin had tremendous recovery power after the first knockdown. And let's see if he can cover here. He's back to boxing okay, but his legs and thighs are very, very heavy right now. I'll tell you that. That stiff jab and that jab set that up the last time by Melindo. Melindo is much more heavy handed than what I was led to believe. This guy can crack. I mean, he's got 11 knockouts in 28 uh, fights, and in this one, he's really outpowering Tommy Surin. Don't forget, his record is 18 and 1. In the Philippines, the competition is pretty darn good, so Melindo's record is uh, deceptive where he only has the 11 knockouts. He has no deceptive power tonight. He's got power tonight. Well, this is a huge stage for these fellas to come to China and fight the uppercut. Very few professional fighters can say, hey, I fought in China. Leila Ali is one of them. Straight right hand. I did her fight in playing Joe. But this is a whole different kettle of fish here. That's another 10-9 round, or 10-8 round for Malindo. He's 16 after two with the two knockdowns. So the other one was a left hook, but when we show you this one, watch for the right hand. Things not going well for Saren. All right, so watch the right hand this time. And he comes, boom, right there. He was in the process of throwing his own shot, and he get caught right on the button. Watch this, boom. He's throwing a wide shot with his own left hand, and he watched right into the right hand. Boom, right there, and snapped that head again. So he's been down twice as we go to the third round. Three knockouts in the fight so far tonight. This is our fourth fight of the evening, and we've had two knockdowns in the first two rounds, so it's exciting. Let's see if Saren can recover, or if Melindo can finish him off here in round three. Saren at times looks like a good boxer, but he's not totally back from that hard shot that he took with about a minute to go in round two. This is the third round in a scheduled eight round, uh, ten round affair, actually. This is scheduled for ten. He hasn't got the looks of a fight that's gonna go ten, but I've been fooled before. Saren has a tendency to pull his right hand back before he throws it. When he does that, he can be countered with a left hook, as we saw in the first round. And he has a tendency to throw his left hook of his own very wide, and so he get nailed with the right hand in the second round. And Melindo, with all the great training they get in the Philippines, able to pick those things up. Saren working with soft punches right now. And Melindo just seems satisfied to walk right through him. He's not giving much head movement, meaning he's not giving any respect. He wants to hit Tommy Saren with another heavy blow. And as soon as he sees that left hand drop right there, the right hand was there again. See Saren's left hand coming down and down. And when he throws it out, he pulls it back to below his uh, mid chest area. See it? Throws his right hand and he's wide openly exposed for the left hook. He makes a lot of mistakes that a guy with quick hands like uh, Melindo can see. Melindo's setting him up right now. He's setting him up for a big shot. You can see exactly what this guy's doing, the mistakes he's making. Because again, Saren's not throwing anything hard. He's busy enough. And you know, he might look like he's out punching this guy right now and he's throwing more shots. But none of these are hard punches. Professional boxing is the hurt business, throwing hard punches. Melindo sits down on his punches, and that's what he's looking to do. Has the left hook underneath the right hand again. 
or I should say over the right hand. There he loads up the windmill and misses that time. And you throw it that hard. Look at the body of Tommy Sermon. He looks in great shape, so he's been able to come off the canvas twice. And he's boxing decently right now, but no power behind his shots. And the book on Melindo is technician, but he's sort of, you know, messing around with this guy because he wants to land power shots. He really wants to sit down in his punch. He's looking right now to throw the right hand because, as you see, Saren hanging that left hand when he pulls it back. And he probably get hit on the bicep. Instead, he comes to the uppercut. Two good body shots off the hands of Melindo. Closing seconds now. This is the third round. Decent round for Saren. And he might even... Uh, I don't know. That's a hard round to score. Some judges... Well, these judges, Robert Hoyle is from Las Vegas, and... Levi Martinez is from Las Cruces in New Mexico, and Raul Kiaz, uh, Caiz, I should say, Jr., is from the USA. So these guys have seen plenty of boxing. I think they'll score it for uh, Melindo because of the power of the punches, but it was a nice boxing round for Saren. So we get ready to go to round number four. You're watching toprank.com as you see the replays. See, the, the reason why I scored that in favor of Melinda was exactly what you're watching. When he lands shots, they're very, very powerful. Saren landed a lot of punches, but they're like this, pity pad shots that aren't hurting Melinda. And professional boxing, as I said, is about hurting opponents. Here we go. This is round four at the... Kotai Arena at the beautiful Venetian in Macau, China. The Venetian, in comparison to the Venetian in Las Vegas, is like the Venetian on steroids here. Huge, fabulous place, courtesy of the health and everything. I can't say enough. Loading up the wild shot that time was uh, Milan Melindo. Melindo from the Philippines has the black shoes and the high black socks. A little bit of gold in the bottom of the sort of black or multicolored trunks of Tommy Saren from Indonesia. Saren boxed well, but again, I don't think he had the powerful enough shots. And he tries to unload a powerful body shot that time, and Melindo just uh, absorbs it. <laughs> Going for the home run again was Melindo, and that's what he wants to do. He's looking, and he's known again as a boxing technician, but tonight he's not respecting the power of Saren at all. And he's, he's really loading up shots. So, you know, a little touch there. Ordinarily, I'd criticize that shot, except I know exactly what he's doing. He's trying to set up the right-hand power shot. So he's fishing with his left hand right now as opposed to throwing a lazy left. Otherwise, he'd be doubling that left. That time he threw the left hook with the malice of forethought. So there's a difference between what Saren does with his pity pad punches because he doesn't have as much power, even though he has nine... Uh, knockouts and his 18 uh, uh, victories, most of them have been TKO variety. The other guy, Melindo, and his uh, knockouts, have, you know, he's got some powers. He's shown two times with knockdowns in the first and second round. Just missed with that right hand that grazed and whistled past the whiskers of uh, Tommy Saren. Tommy Saren to the left of your screen, the Indonesian fighter, 18 and 1. Melindo, undefeated. 28-0, 11 knockouts, now to the left of your screen. Coming forward. Going to be a little bit more of a technical battle right now as uh, Saren tries to claw his way back into the fight. He's doing a nice job boxing in this round. And he could possibly win this round unless uh, Melindo can land something with a little bit more power because uh, Saren is kind of out there. Right now. Big left hand, and it's going to be hard for him to pull himself off the canvas. His eyes aren't clear. He probably stumble over, but he doesn't. He falls back into the ropes, and the referee stops the fight. That scored as a fourth round knockout victory for Milan Melindo. So what a night for the Filipinos. As Milan Melindo knocks out Tommy Saren in the fourth round with a shot right on the chin. It's knockout night in China. Wow. We'll show you the knockout punch.
But what a terrific shot it was. And you knew by the look in his eyes when he went down that either he wouldn't be able to get up or he wouldn't have much left when he did, and that was the case. So watch this shot. Left hook, perfect. Coming forward, and as I said before, he kept drop, keeps dropping that right hand this time. You see when he had thrown his right hand and he pulls it back, he pulled it down toward his chest, and Melinda had seen that, and he was trying to set this up for two rounds, and he was really knocked out for all practical purposes. Look at his eyes right there. And I thought he'd get up and fall back down. In, as a matter of fact, he'd get up and fell into the ropes. So the referee, uh, who's very experienced, Jose Rivera, realized he might be hurt. More important to let the doctor come in than count him out. That's a terrific win for Milan Melindo, and you'll see more of him on Top Rank Boxing for sure, as is a great rapport between the Philippines and Top Rank. All right, let's go to Lupe Contreras and make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jose H. Rivera determines the fighter can no longer continue, and he calls a halt to this contest with an official time of 2 minutes, 38 seconds of round number 4. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, Milan El Meteorico Melindo. So the boxing technician Milan Melindo goes from being a boxing technician tonight to a big power banger as he knocks out Tommy Cern. They call it a TKO, but watch this. It's all the power of Melindo throughout the course. This is round one, the left hook. Big shot dropped him. Left hook, down he goes. That's the same shot from a different angle. This is round two. This time it'll be the right hand. Boom. A lot of people would think he wouldn't get up from that. The right hand shot from a different angle. Round three was a boxing round, and then this to end the whole thing in round four. And you could just tell from looking in his eyes, the count got up to six and seven and eight. And then he falls back into the ropes. The referee knew at that stage. No.